Sorry shoemakers, I was supposed to publish this video last Friday but I had a date night with the missus so I couldn't do it. Meanwhile, this is the pair of Adelaide Oxford that we were working on last week. Still need some finishing and polishing. Welcome to Bomber Bespoke. Today we're going to try our hands on this pair of loafers by Joe Walk Shoemaker without using a shoe last. <laughs> Now saying that we're not going to be using a shoe last is not entirely correct. Of course, we still taped the last and got the last copies. Only thing is that we're now going to design strictly on a mean form. So let's go ahead and create our mean form. Someone will say, why is it important to use a mean form? Well, sometimes you can do away with it and just design on the lateral side. But if you check, the lateral and the medial side you'd find that they are not exactly the same. The mean form helps you get an average between those two sides so that what you're working with is reflective of the two. So right now I have traced out my lateral side last copy on a piece of cardboard and then I'll trace on the medial side last copy onto the lateral side last copy. If everything that I'm saying sounds like Greek to you, maybe you should watch a couple of videos before this one, particularly the last one that I put out. So these are the two, the differential between the two vamp lines. So mark that in and then you find the differential between the two of them and also at this back center line area. For the feather head, you use the the longer of the two and then you cut along the middle so I cut along the middle and voila that was how I got this main form the last length of this shoe is 33 cm bear that in mind and that's going to form the basis for all of the design that we're going to be doing of course we're going to be using our most popular rule of quarters so firstly, we divide our vamp line into two. We forgot to mark in the counterpoint. Of course, you know the formula for the counterpoint, the last length divided by five. So mark that in at the back. Then we'll draw our quarter line to connect the counterpoint to the middle of the vamp line. Next, we will divide our quarter line into two. Divide our quarter line into two and mark that division. Then if we add one cm to the counterpoint, that gives us the back height from where we can draw the top line of our loafers. So that's the quarter line and that's the top line. So last length, like we said, is 33 cm. So deploying our rule of quarters, 33 divided by four, gives us 8.25. So the instep of this design will be from the uh, vamp point 8.25, one quarter of the last length from the vamp point. Now I draw a straight line from the vamp point to the instep and then another straight line from the vamp point towards the tip. There we go. Everything simple up till this moment, I hope. Now. In designing these loafers, you can start the tongue or facing of your loafers anywhere under the vamp line. So I'm starting it 2 cm beneath the instep, sorry, anywhere under the instep. So I'm starting 2 cm beneath the instep, then I draw a perpendicular line from that point. Rule of quarters. We need the tongue to be one quarter. That means on this side is going to be one eight. One eight of the last length is 4.125. We mark that on that line. Then we draw a line from that place to a point about one cm beneath the middle of our vamp line. So that's the facing of our loafers. Now, as you can see, the loafers, the simple loafers is almost done. We can carve that place in and have our loafers, but I really want to be adventurous with the curvature of these loafers. So I'm going to deploy my French curve 
and really give it a very ambitious curve around the facing. So that's quite some curve that I have there. Coffee break. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, I roast, grind and brew my own coffee. <laughs> so let me outline these basic loafers for you. You see that it starts from there. And that's the top line right there. So as you can see, this is already a basic loafers. But from the design that you saw, uh, it was wingtip. So deploying our rule of quarters again from the tip right here to where the wingtip will start will be one quarter of the last line. So we mark 8.25 right there. And then to draw in the elbow of our wingtip, we'll draw a right angle from that point. And then, see, that's a right angle from that point. Then we extend our top line to meet that line that we just drew. So this line, and you find that if we take a measurement of that line to the point where it intersects with the extended top line, it gives us exactly one eighth of our last length, which of course, if we duplicate becomes one quarter again, the rule of quarters coming through. So we divide that one eight into two and then from the middle of our vamp line we draw a line to connect the middle of that line that we drew just now. This line is going to form most of our wing tip. So you find that we can curve and then just curve in that way and draw it down that way to get the entirety of our wing tip. But for cleanliness, I'm going to use my French curve to curve in from that point. And we have the elbow of our wingtip done. How long should the wingtip be? Of course, one quarter of the last length. You mark that in there. And that's going to form the point from where you are going to, you know, curve down your wingtip towards the feather edge. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, you see that deploying the rule of quarters in, in design, our wingtip, even the wingtip itself, can be designed. Much like the same way we did when we used the rule of quarters in designing the capital of our Adelaide Oxford that we did in the previous video. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the outline of the loafers the working pattern of the loafers that we are designing. Now, I read an article by a gentleman called Mikhail, I think a Ukrainian or Russian name, I can't remember exactly his name, but I took a screenshot of the article uh, that he wrote on how to design loafers. He has quite interesting ideas of how to spring uh, the vamp of loafers that I'm going to be deploying in this video. I'll leave a link to his article uh, in the description so you guys can check him out. He has quite very revealing uh, tutorials. He doesn't shoot videos. I don't know if he shoots videos, but he has written tutorials and blog posts on how to draw patterns and make shoes that I think anyone who is interested in the subject should read. So this is his method, which involves splitting the vamp line and adding three to five mm to it now this is the screenshot of mikhail blast keith Kaz article that i was talking about just now and his method for springing the vamp like i said involves splitting the vamp line open and adding about five mm to eight mm to the split and using that to spring the entire pattern. So let's see how that is done. So we split the vamp line open and add 5mm. Secure it in place so that it doesn't move. Fold over and then further secure it so that everything is nice, secure, and fine, and done. So, 
now so the distance there is about 5 mm <coughs> excuse me so this is where the magic begins so you see this facing of your loafers the intersection point between the facing and the top line using the top line as reference you draw a perpendicular line from that intersection point right according to Mikkel now if you extend that line to the point where it touches the facing that is going to be your pivot point for springing so in his case he used the tip topmost part of the vamp however in my case I had straightened out that line so I'm going to use the point where my wing tip commences and then of course place that line where the perpendicular line we drew earlier on starts all on a straight line then draw in all parts of the pattern except for the facing part of course roll in the wingtip lines so all parts of the pattern except for the hung area then using that intersection point you pivot the facing to fall on the straight line and then you draw in the facing. Doing it this way, you find that you have straightened out the entire pattern and then have, you've gotten the whole of your pattern. I've gone ahead and drawn in the lines of my wingtip so that we can duplicate this and our pattern will be done right so the entire pattern is done if you wanted to add um, a back counter area you can do all of that i basically also deployed the rule of quarters in doing this um, my assignment to you is could you narrate in the comment section how i use the rule of quarters in deciding the dimensions of this counter area ultimately i'm not going to use this um, counter in the particular shoe that i want to do but it's always nice to have it in the pattern for maybe a second pair or a third pair that i might be interested in making so i'm going to leave it plain i'm just going to have <coughs> sorry the wing tip and then the rest of the shoe will just be plain but regardless i went ahead and added that counter design lines so that when i do want to use it i can go ahead and do that so unfolding the pattern this is what it came to everything is looking well and good i've cut in the tracing channels and i've also um, punched in a few holes where i can add tassels if i so desire now Mikkel's method is something that I haven't tested so um, I'm still going to build this shoe and see whether the pattern works out very well um, but I just wanted to share that with you um, I'm not going to I'm going to use this as basically the lining pattern what you see on the right and then I'm going to also just cut out um, different patterns I don't just want one um, single thing and that's of course particularly because I want to add brogue holes and I maybe also add a medallion in the vamp itself the tracing channels for the design stitching lines of your vamp and I also go ahead and punch in the brogue holes, the max for the brogue holes. And there we have our vamp. Then also trace out this part of the last. Sorry, this part of the pattern. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long, long, hectic day. I'm beginning to feel sleepy. But let's just get this done so that I can go and get some beauty sleep. So there we have it. 
so we won't forget to add our stitching allowance in the front here and then maybe also some slight stitching allowance at the back because we are going to have A stitch and turn so we'll add some stitching allowance at the back right there so that we can have somewhere to stitch and turn and finish off our pattern so ladies and gentlemen okay not forgetting to add the punches the holes for our castles when we need them and then cut tracing channels along the stitching allowance so that we would have channels that we can mark in order to mark on our pieces of leather so ladies and gentlemen that is the back part of the loafers and that's the front part of the vamp and there we have our pattern i'm going to try this out and drape lasting but that will be in the next video until then see you guys and god bless you